Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist. It's good to see some visitors here and some old friends of the church. So we're glad to have you all here this morning. Uh, a few announcements to start out. Every Tuesday at 1030 in the Fellowship Hall, Pastor Tom uh, leads our Bible study group. And they're currently going over the Gospel of Mark. So that's Tuesdays downstairs at 1030. Uh, Monday the 24th at 7 p.m. there will be a meeting of the audit committee. And that will be here at church on Monday the 24th, 7 p.m. Also coming up Tuesday the 25th at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall, uh, there will be a meeting of anybody interested in helping um, with Vacation Bible School. So that will be a planning meeting for Bible School on Tuesday, May 25th for anybody that's uh, interested in helping this year. Any other announcements that need to be made at this time? If not, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the praise of the Lord.
stand as you're able and join me with, for the call to worship. Turn it in your bulletins. Clap your hands, all people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. For Christ is alive and the Holy Spirit comes. God, God is ruler over all the earth and reigns over all nations. God put all things under Christ's feet. Christ is the head over all things. Over the church. Gather to know the immeasurable greatness of God, to exalt in the one who grants revelation. We come together blessing God for all who have seen and heard. Our opening hymn this morning is 327. Crown him with many crowns. seated. Our assurance of forgiveness. God rules over all the earth and reigns over all the nations. Those who do not believe are condemned, but to all who believe there is offered the immeasurable greatness of God's power. Receive God's forgiveness with joy. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Join in the prayer for illumination. 
Guide us, O oh God, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Luke, Luke 24, verses 44 through 53. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to, said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. <laughs> And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our children's message this morning will be brought to us by Susie Ruth. Good morning. So this, Winston's here, and I guess people are joining us still on Facebook. So this kind is for the children and for us as adults, too. It's Ascension Sunday, a very special day in the, in the life of the church and Jesus. And so it makes us think about a lot of things. The first thing that comes to mind when I was reading the scripture this week and praying about it and thinking about it was that Jesus left a to-do list. And we all know what that's like. I tend to lose my to-do list, and therefore I don't every, always get everything done. But I know children at home are given to-do lists, chores. I'm sure, Winston, you've had a to-do list. When I taught school, I had a big to-do list for the children so they could learn that routine. Well, on this Ascension Sunday, we think about that to-do list, that list that was so important to the disciples and their message and their ministry and what Jesus wanted for them to do after he ascended into heaven. And we know that Jesus' ministry was so powerful in our lives. And what he gave to us reminds us that we do have a job. And so this week, for those of us here and for the children, all of us, we need to remember that to-do list. And I remind myself every day, yes, I need to make my bed. I need to check on the cat upstairs. I need to feed the dog. I need to make Chuck sure he's got his to-do list. But more than anything, I need to remember my spiritual to-do list. The things that mean so much, and if I just take the time to do them, Every day, every week, every month. The things that Jesus reached out and told the disciples that they needed to do and they needed to share with us. So I'll share with you my little to-do list. And, um, and I'll leave some up here if anybody wants to make their to-do list. I was hoping, you know, we'd have about zillion children. And I made, you know, the teacher in me was prepared with all these extra to-do lists. The main thing, and I learned this not only in Sunday school, from my grandparents, from the minister in the pulpit, in every church I've ever been in, but from my parents. They prayed every morning. They had devotion every morning. And I think for children, my oldest daughter has, we have blessed with three grandchildren, and they pray every morning at breakfast, and they've begun to share the Bible more and more with them. And so I, that reminds me when Reed says, Gigi, have you read your Bible today? Well, Reed, I need to make sure I get that checked off on my to-do list. Um, that we read the Bible, that we read God's Word and remember what our mission is. And the third thing is to tell others about Jesus. 
and do that in how we act, how we interact with people, how we care about people, how we live our lives. And I just have to say something really special this morning. We have two dear friends that came to join us this morning in church. I'm not going to call them out. But Andale called and asked Chuck needed him this week, and he went. And they started talking about church. And she asked, where do y'all go to church? And Chuck said, we go to First Methodist in Mount Gilead. And here they are. She and Wentford this morning, and we're so blessed because that was on Jesus' to-do list for the disciples and for us. Invite people to church. Be there. Share our church. We need to come together as a people, especially now, to pray together and be together. So let us pray now. As adults and as children, we need to remember God and Jesus' to-do list, to pray, to read our Bible, to show Jesus and his love in our life to others and invite them to church. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Suji. My love, my lovely wife, she has a honey to list. And uh, <clears throat> I have been doing my job some, not completely have done, but thanks be to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Plant your word in our hearts and birth your wisdom through us in ways we can not begin to comprehend, so that we may be transformed slowly but steadily. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Today is Ascension Sunday, commemorating the risen Christ ascending into heaven to his uh, heavenly Father. Even though Enoch, who walked with God for all the days of his life, and the prophet Elijah ascended into heaven in the Old Testament, the ascension of Jesus remains a mystery because it is beyond describing in words. <clears throat> The ascension of Jesus is only found in the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts. Acts contains more detail about the ascension and the coming and the walking of the Holy Spirit in the early church. Before the ascension, Jesus promised his disciples that they will receive power from on high. Also, he commands that commands them to stay together in the upper room in Jerusalem. They must wait for the realization and the fulfillment of his promise. How long would they have to wait? One day? Two days? It's seven days. One week must pass until the day of Pentecost comes, which is 50 days after Easter. Pentecost is the day when the Holy Spirit became, becomes embodied in the life of disciples, and the power of the Holy Spirit imparted it in the lives of a community of believers. But now, it's a time to wait. Thus, it reminds us of the roles of waiting in our lives. Kum and I lived in Hillsborough, outside of Durham and Chapel Hill. An ice cream store has been known as the best ice cream place in North Carolina for many years. In order to get to two scoops of ice cream, of the ice cream, we had to wait for an hour during the weekend. But during the pandemic, we had to wait 
two hours. Two scoops of ice cream for two hours. From our home to where the ice cream place takes about 20 minutes. So round trip, 40 minutes. And the, we had to find a parking spot and the walk into that place and then wait for two hours. Only about four hours for two scoops of ice cream. The price of two scoops of ice cream is equivalent with that of a fast food meal. But people, including Kim and me, wait for the two ice cream, for the tasty ice cream. As soon as you put ice cream into your mouth, all our waiting time, shh, gone. It's yummy. It is so good. Children are waiting for the school bus. Mothers are waiting for food to be, to, to, to be cooked well. And we are waiting in restaurants, arriving at our travel destinations, waiting for rain to stop, the dark clouds to move away, and the sun to shine. People do not like to wait, except perhaps waiting for two scoops of ice cream. But waiting is a part of our lives. In fact, we are always waiting. While we are waiting, what we are doing is important because it tells who we are. When we are alone, what we do tells us who we are. While people are waiting, most people put out a cellular phone and check out emails, time news, or make unimportant phone calls because people do not know how to handle being just still and must fill the empty waiting time. However, for Christians, waiting is essential to spiritual life. Waiting for Christians is not an empty and waste time. For us, it is a waiting with a promise in our hearts that makes already present what we are waiting for. We wait during Advent for the birth of Jesus Christ. We wait after Easter for the coming of the Holy Spirit. After the ascension of Jesus, we wait for his coming again in glory. It's a waiting in the conviction that we have already seen God's steps in our lives and that God is working in us in waiting. Imagine what the disciples did and how they spent the waiting time. Rather than blame others' unfaithfulness, why did you do that for? And the abandonment of Jesus on Calvary. You betrayed him three times. You remember Peter? Which is under the bridge. The disciples shared their experiences of Jesus Christ. Reminiscence, remembrance, and the recollection of Jesus' teaching and the miraculous miracles, all pulled, were pulled and discussed collectively. Reflections and meditations on Jesus' word occurred sporadically. Individual heartbreaking experiences as they were told about his death on the cross. And the regrets were frequently shared frequently. By that time, 
all excuses were stripped away, and all self-justification was silenced. There could be compassion for one another. Theologian and a philosopher in the 20th century, Soren Kierkegaard says, not God, but you, the maker of the confession, get to know something by your act of confession. By doing sharing, compassion, confession and the reminiscing, the wasting, the waiting time for disciples brought solidarity, unanimity, which led them into prayer. Waiting and the prayer sound pretty safe until we remember that our society has a little patience with those who decide to wait and pray because our society promotes spontaneity and instant gratification. We forget. Any good things takes a long time. Moreover, prayer acknowledges our dependence on God. It is unfortunate to know that our culture is uncomfortable with dependence especially young adults, maybe from our children and the grandchildren, we have a hold. Don't tell me what to do. I'm old enough to make my own decisions. Don't tell me. Our culture stays in inescapable flowing of independent river so that many of us live and die in a considerable isolation from one another. Isolation brings loneliness, like the incarcerated experience. Loneliness and isolation prevail in our society, especially during the pandemic, the perfect time for solid solitary prayer in Mount Gilead has been during the pandemic. You cannot find better than this time and this place to have a good fellowship with the Christian prayer life. Saint Theophon, a well-known Russian Orthodox Church priest says, to pray is to descend all the mind into heart and dare to stand before the face of love of the Lord, ever-present, all-seeing within you. The question is, how can we move down our knowledge of Jesus Christ from here to here? How can we move down? That is important. And many spiritual directors encourage meditation and prayer, which Jesus encourages his disciples in today's scripture. Many of us have been learned about the prayer, when pray, how to pray, what to pray. And we heard many times about the importance of prayer. Does it help us to pray? I have more than 100 books about meditation and prayer. Please do not think that I read them all. I read some and maybe most of them. To read those books has not helped me to pray deeply. What I have found out is that in order to have a deep prayer, I have to pray constantly. That helps me to move all my knowledge of Jesus Christ from here to here. When, we, when our hearts are touched by here, by the power of the Holy Spirit, then 
we can hear the voice of Jesus Christ. The disciples in the upper room wait. They pray. Not simply out of obedience. They wait. They pray because they desire. They desire the promised power from on high and all that it makes possible. Their desire is good and holy. One time, I had a very strong desire. Would you like to know my desire? I want to be a redneck. <laughs> I want to put on John Deere cap on my head, and I want to put. I want to have a long beard and mustache, and I want to put overall all over me and make a big belly, and I want to have a boots there. And I want to put tobacco beside my mouth and the spit it on the ground once in a while. And then I wanna, wanted to speak deep southern accent. <laughs> and going to fishing and the hunting. That was my desire. You know what? I quit. Because it's not easy for me to learn deep southern accent. <laughs> so my desire was known to people, and the people gave me a cap, overall, and boots, other stuff for Christmas for Christmas gifts. And they have been told me, Pastor Kong, you have to learn deep southern accent. <laughs> Our desires lead into actions, and action forms our character, and the character tells about our identity. Therefore, our desire produces our identity. What is our desire while we are waiting. During the last weekdays, did we desire to fill up our gas container as much as we could without considering others? Is that Christian attitude? As long as I have a plenty of gas, I am fine and I do not care about the gas price goes up. Is that one of our desires? Or once in a while, do we desire to stop and listen to the voice of God? Oh God, I am here, speak to me. I love to hear your voice. Do we desire to know the very heart of God, God's desire that is a passionate disposition to be in loving relationship with you and with me? The desires of the Israelites were to have a king their, their request is, look around our countries. They have a king, so we want to have our own king. God, you are not our king, but help us have a, the, a king. Send us a prophet who can speak to us rather than you speak to us directly because we are afraid of you. Or give us someone who can help us to resolve a difficult situation rather than they were seeking God directly for an intimate relationship with God. 
Is that the Bible story? So it is today. Rather than having a closer relationship with Jesus individually through a spiritual formation groups, some Christians request, give us a good pastor who can do all jobs for us, who can pray for us all day long, or give us someone who will do it for us so that we can avoid intimacy with God ourselves and to continue to reap the benefits from them. Where do people, why people think like this? Because we are influenced by consumerism. Consumerism has permeated into the hearts of Christians and saying, we pay you, pastor, we pay you, and you got to do something for us. It is a crucial to understand that consumerism and the greed are the enemies of a genuine Christian community and the spiritual growth because Jesus never ever advocate consumerism mentality and greed but he calls us out of the world we are in the world not of the world. We have observed many people today live fractured and fragmented lives in which waiting, prayer, and godly desire are foreign to them. Broken people live broken lives. A broken husband, a broken wife will create a broken family. Fragmented people cannot produce goodness and faithfulness to God and to one another. But here is good news. Only in Christ Jesus our fractured and fragmented lives can be healed, can be cured, and we can see remedy. Reconstructions, defragmentation, and transformation occur in waiting, in the silence, and in prayer. By doing so, we expect good things happen in our lives. Without expectation, our waiting can be bogged down in the presence of a fractured and a fragmentation. Wandering around, going from one little sensation to another. Our lives get stuffed with the cellular phones and other electronic devices, television stories and the programs and gossip. Without joyful expectation, we indulge ourselves in whatever gives us a moment of a pleasure. And then our mind loses the discipline of discerning between what leads us close to Jesus and what does not. And then our hearts lose our spiritual identity. However, when we wait in expectation, our whole being will be surprised by joy, which is much better than two scoops of ice cream, and which is much better than full of gas in our gas container. It is a joyful expectation of the Holy Spirit coming that offers vitality to our lives. The expectation of the fulfillment of Jesus' promise to us is what allows us to pay full attention to the road on which we are walking. When the Holy Spirit 
when we have the Holy Spirit to look forward to, we can already experience the Holy Spirit in the waiting. A quiet time, meditation, and the prayer in which we wait on the Holy Spirit is never, never wasted time. But it is a holy waiting time because it, it is in these times we, when we put aside all our tasks that we are strengthened for the very tasks we lay down, lay aside. More importantly, we experience the fulfillment of Jesus' promises now as we are waiting and in praying. So we thank, thank Jesus for giving us holy waiting. It is a wonderful time that we can enjoy today, tomorrow, and forever. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for your word. Help us to utilize our time every moment for you, for your glory. In return, we may be sanctified. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for your uh, generous uh, contribution for the mission and the ministry of Jesus Christ. According to our church uh, financial chair, uh, you have been very faithful, and I give thanks to God. So please continue to be faithful to support the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ, and let us pray. We respond as your apostles to the mission on which you send us. As we speak of your realm, we would also extend the outreach of others on behalf of your whole church in every land. We give thanks for our, our revelation and your rule. Inspire your church to use these gifts to your glory and honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As we continue worship our living and loving God, we have some celebrations and the prayer concerns that we need to share with one another. First of all, uh, this morning we had a United Men's Breakfast. It was a very good fellowship. Uh, during that uh, uh, breakfast, uh, I, I believe Brother Roy Anderson, uh, he shared how much we uh, have sold uh, the tickets for spring barbecue play sale. And I give thanks to all women at this church who made cakes, who cleaned, and who helped that barbecue play sale successful. So thank you very much. And also uh, remember Sister Betty, uh, Betty Olive, uh, who fell uh, last week, and uh, I talked with her. She feels sore all over her body, so remember her in your prayers. We continue to lift up people, those who have uh, recovery, uh, Kate uh, Evans, uh, Linda Laramick, Kay Martin, Donna Martin, Jean Ann, and Leanne Ifford, Kathy Paul. Especially remember Jimmy Ifford, Joe Parson, and Spencer Willard. And also, uh, we celebrate Mitch Taylor's daughter, uh, married yesterday, and all our blessings be upon her and her uh, marriage. We have, uh, some people will have a surgery soon, so remember Brother Joe Martin and Laura Haywood in your prayers. Continue to remember Marietta Andrews and people, those who are uh, 
going through some challenges in their lives. And also we welcome Duncan. You are there and listening to Pastor Gong's sermon. We are very glad to have you. Let's give a welcome applause. <laughs> and we have uh, uh, Tina Curry uh, who walked with me yesterday at the uh, Yuhari Mountain and uh, she promised me to visit me today. So she is with us. So let us welcome her. And also Suji share uh, with us uh, the special people who are sitting beside you. Yes, we are very glad to have you. <laughs> Anyone else? Also, Mike. Mike. Uh, he uh, used to be uh, our church member, and he, now he is the under care of a sister Emily now for <laughs> temporary. <laughs> temporary, yes. Any other celebration or prayer concerns that you might have? So let us prepare our hearts and minds as we come to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, who has raised up our Lord Jesus Christ from the grave, and who has set him at your right hand, we praise you for the victory that you have made available to us through Christ. We are grateful for the promise that just as Christ conquered sin and death, and even now in your divine presence, so you have enabled us to share in his resurrection. And one day we will be able to gather around the throne and sing your praises. Grant us boldness, O Lord, to share that good news with the lost world. Help us to be ambassadors of your grace, proclaimers of your glory. Our eternal God, as Christ revealed your love in his own earthly life, so let us be reflections of your love in all that we do and the that we might truly be more like you, Jesus Christ. We pray all this in your Son's name, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespasses. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from you. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today we talked about uh, waiting for the Spirit of God coming into our lives. Actually, also, I said uh, that we, uh, the Spirit of God is already in us. We are living in that promise. So our closing hymn is the Spirit of the Living God. We are going to sing twice, and uh, Sophia will play one more time. By that time, I'd like to uh, encourage you to just open your hands, you know, toward the uh, heaven and to receive the Spirit that dwells in you. So please stand, and we're going to sing Spirit of the Living God.
my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace and the strength of the Holy Spirit and let Jesus Christ lead your life today, tomorrow, and forever. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. The people of God say, Amen. Amen.